we are live. All right, so thank you for coming again. My name is Ben Ishiamae Levy. I'm a examiner, uh, a BDD person. And uh, soon I'm going to start doing uh, a little bit of Ethereum malarkey later this year. But for now, uh, today I'm going to be talking about the Visual Studio Mobile Center, which is um, a uh, currently on preview, which is going to simplify the life cycle of a mobile app development with Xamarin. So, um, basically the current state of affairs at present, uh, Microsoft went on the shopping spree and bought those guys a couple of years ago. Xamarin Test Cloud was a bit belonged to Xamarin that had been bought uh, last year. Xamarin Insight as well. And that is just two um, Azure uh, kind of offering that exists present, and that's an open uh, source project. So Microsoft has a lot of uh, mobile-related products that just simply simplifies again uh, lifecycle devel development. But they are literally um, uh, kind of in each in their corner, and it's not very very. Well, it's you, you can just manage it, but it's not very convenient to actually keep your eye on on one uh, on the whole development. You literally have to have five or six different windows um, open at, um, at all time in order to uh, know what you are uh, doing. Um, so um, we've got OkiHap. So OkiHap used to be an open source project called uh, OkiKit, I believe. Uh, that uh, well, was started like, quite a while back. Uh, that just uh, get, got transformed into OkiHap, which was a paying uh, platform that got acquired by Microsoft in uh, 2014. There we go. Uh, I don't know if any of you know about this this platform. Right. So, do uh, uh, you know about something called Test, uh, not Test, uh, what? What did I used to be called again? Whatever. Do, do, you, do you actually build mobile apps? Anybody uh, build mobile apps in this room? Ready? Zero? One? One person? What do you play golf for? It's <laughs> 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 a so, so mobile development malarkey. You have to just have a little bit of relation to it. No? no really, I know you build apps. I know you build apps. So come, let's assume that everybody here is very, very shy and you all know about, uh, about mobile apps. So uh, OK app is literally a distribution management platform that al allows you to push your builds to uh, set of, um, of um, people, of groups, um, for testing, for instance, or to deploy to an app store, to the Google Play, to whatever. Uh, it also provides crash analysis and uh, analytics. Uh, for instance, how many users were using the app yesterday, uh, what is the ratio of uh, mobile platform, operating system, and so forth. Um, so the name actually comes from an iOS, deep well, yes, so basically the, view, the people that build this uh, app um, use the word ad hoc, such as like ad hoc distribution, and the key uh, in order just to uh, create the uh, application name, OK, ad hoc key. So that's, uh, that's about it. So um, the idea is just to get all this, uh, this flow simplified. They did the first step, but as we're going to see, it's getting much and much better, more and more better. Then we've got Xamarin Test Cloud. Uh, we had actually the luck to have Carl Kruko, which is a guy that literally builds this project. Um, it used to, but it's still called Calabash on the open source version, but uh, now it's called uh, Test Cloud. You probably um, heard about it. So uh, that got, um, well, this, uh, this project, got a Test Cloud, uh, sorry, uh, Test Cloud, uh, Calabash, got built by Xa uh, Xamarin a few years ago under Microsoft Intel, by Xamarin. Um, what it is is literally a, uh, a big room uh, with stacks of devices, about two thousand of them, that are actually a little bit broken up because if you just leave a <coughs> telephone like that uh, to run uh, application tests like 24-7, uh, that's going to overheat and probably explode. So they do some really interesting stuff. They open them up a little bit in order to create a little bit more ventilation. And uh, that seems to be working pretty well. Um, they just group then all those different devices, which will be just like all the form factor you may think about, oh, the most popular one, obviously, because uh, in terms of um, iOS devices, you just have a li limited set. Although when you start playing with operating system and form factors, that get quite crazy. With Android, it's just like, uh, if you just multiply form factors per manufacturer plus operating system. We just are talking about millions of possibilities. <laughs> so <laughs> you cannot uh, do that, but you can at least have a form factor of each uh, with each uh, version of popular operating system, at least. Um, so that's um, defi definitely not something that anybody can do at home. Uh, first, is dangerous. 
uh, secondly, it costs a lot of money. Uh, and if you would like just to try to do some uh, UI testing with your phone even at home, uh, let's say that you've got a lot of money and you can buy 10 iPhone, but uh, usually that's not the case. Um, if you've got like a couple of iPhones, you won't be able to maintain different versions of the operating system that you would like to test it on. And uh, we're talking about Android. It's crazy, so uh, yeah. Uh, it also supports Cucumber. Uh, I'm a very big Cucumberist. Uh, I like behavioral driven development because it's very, very good. Uh, it's very easy to do with that. And the way you drive this thing is with a framework called UI Test from Xamarin, but you can actually uh, use different other popular framework I will, um, as we're going to see later. Um, then you've got Xamarin Insight, uh, which uh, is um, literally a um, crashes and analytics platform uh, built by Xamarin, acquired by Microsoft again. Uh, that's kind of a competitor to Reagan, if you're fa familiar with this platform. It's just like literally, again, just like a crash uh, aggregator. We can see that already there is a bit of clash uh, with OkiHack that already had both of those functionality. Uh, so that's been much obviously with OkiHack. Uh, then we've got the uh, Azure Mobile Engagement, uh, part of the Azure platform that uh, provides analytics and push notification. Again, push notification is on its own, but analytics is all again clashing with just the two previous um, offerings. Uh, and uh, we have Azure App Services, um, which provides so the magic Azure tables, um, authentication, such as uh, providing easy, um, easy setup authentication with Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. And push notification again, uh, that clashes with the previous um, Azure offering. Uh, so and that itself is already an aggregation of services that already existed, such as um, web app and mobile app, plus the added logic and workflow apps and API apps. So that's an aggregation that's getting into another ag aggregation. So we can see where we're going. And finally, we've got code push, which is, uh, I'm personally not very familiar for this one, because I haven't been doing that much code and React Native but that allows you to kind of uh, modify your application on the fly without re-going through um, the App Store at all. Uh, so apparently something that I learned is uh, Apple is absolutely okay for you to modify your app on the fly as long as you don't transform it into something else, completely different. So if you have like a shopping app and you turn, transform it into, uh, I don't know, like a game, they're not going to be very happy, but otherwise they're pretty, pretty lax. So this is what happened, Lam, there you go. You don't see the mobile center. The idea is just to get all the things and put them into one because, uh, well, that saves time. Uh, I'm kind of using most of those bits except the uh, the, the last one, this Cordoba Malarkey. Uh, and literally, I just have like five browser opens, well, five windows open at um, mostly all the time. Uh, although I'm not using inside the browser, I'm using um, Reagan uh, because I do a lot of changes who are going to get into inside. Inside actually never really went live. It was kind of beta ish, beta ish, beta ish, beta ish, and now it just pushed, um, pushed into it. Very good. So, um, one portal. Yeah, so that's uh, so Microsoft is going through something you probably have noticed. When you are a company and you buy some other companies, you usually don't keep the company name that you, uh, that you buy, except maybe LinkedIn, because it's got pretty strong branding. But nobody knows, except if you're a developer, because I'm in, but no idea inside what it is. So that you don't really, really care. So uh, obviously Visual Studio <coughs> and Azure, okay, maybe. Uh, even if you're not a developer, you might uh, have heard about it. So uh, as I mentioned before, I'm giving Xamarin brand one year max, and then after it's going to disappear into Oblivion. Um, but it's, I hope they're going to keep the monkey though, because they're very cute. So um, we're getting all, all those uh, platforms into one umbrella, so just like literally one portal to get that on. Um, and um, the, the thing is, you actually don't have to use all of those. If you are just using another service for your crashes and analytics, no problem. You can just use only what you need. Uh, yes, so uh, you are absolutely under no obligation just to use all the services. You can do what you want to do. You'll see that the flexibility is actually quite massive by the way the uh, platform has been rebuilt from the ground up to some, to some extent. Uh, and uh, by the way, this uh, is currently in preview, so it is free for a while. Uh, with, with just like some limitation on what you can do, but uh, you can trade out. Um, so uh, something that to note is in terms of features, it's not only Xamarin oriented. You can actually use Objective-C, Java, uh, React Native, or, or Swift in order just to use this portal. That is like a language agnostic. 
So um, the, as, as we just mentioned before, the videos that you'll get are going to be a pure test, crash, beta distribution, and analytics. Uh, and we've got cloud feature, features such as uh, like the Azure uh, uh, services of authentication, those tables, and uh, offline sync. I didn't mention offline sync, but that's actually it's not currently offered. Offline sync that is going to be on the roadmap. So um, it's in preview and completely free. Um, if you are an existing OK app user, you can use your credentials to go straight into it. Or you can uh, sign up with your um, GitHub account, the Microsoft account. So um, something to know also at present, the um, repository it can connect to is only GitHub. Um, they really wanted to go to market ASAP uh, and just get a bare bond set of functionalities. Uh, although, uh, for instance, um, I use GitHub for my open source uh, project, but for uh, my private project, uh, I'm using uh, the Atlassian um, offering um, at present, uh, which is Bitbucket. That is going just to be coming uh, pretty, pretty soon. And any other kind of Git flavor um, will be there as well. So uh, that's pretty much how it looks like. I'm just going to go quickly through the slide and then just do a live demo of uh, what you're offering just in case the connectivity crashes, I can actually so, so, uh, show something. So um, so when you just uh, log in, that's uh, whatever, uh, this is exactly what happens. So you, get, you need to create an application first, which is connecting to uh, your um, Git repository, first of all. So oh, there's a lot of contrast here. But uh, anyway, you can pick up, first of all, what kind of project you want to use, if it is uh, iOS uh, or Android. And um, if you want to use the Objective C React Native or Xamarin platform, well, cannot really see what's happening there as well. Uh, if you are using Xamarin or Xamarin form, you will have. Uh, if and if you want to uh, take advantage of the crash and analytics, you need to uh, incorporate uh, some NuGet packages that will just literally uh, send away analytics and crash reports whenever your application crash or whenever uh, well, something is happening. So. Um, I cannot really see something, <laughs> very sorry. But that's just pretty much I'm going through what you need to do if you use visual studio. So you just get this mobile analytic package uh, and uh, then the, uh, the crash is one. Um, right, it's not very clear. Uh, and well, I'm just going to skip that. It's not very interesting. Uh, that is just the way you um, initialize your application with Android and with iOS. Some code. But basically, it's one line of code on each platform in order to be able to initialize analytics and crashes. That is only if you want to take advantage of analytics and crashes. If you don't need that, you don't need to do that as well. Although uh, it's a mix and match, you can use only analytics, only crashes, or both. That's up to you or not. Then, so uh, next, you'd have um, therefore to connect your GitHub repository if you're already um, logged in um, GitHub you will uh, be presented with a list of your repositories without uh, having to do a single thing. And uh, then you just uh, need to pick one of your repositories. Um, so we selected our um, GitHub repository, and then we are presented uh, with, can I, can I actually zoom? Oops. Uh, you are presented literally with directly your uh, project file uh, that you don't need to select, because that's going to get the, the default one on your repository. Then you can pick your configuration and the version of Xcode you want to, um, to use. So, uh, so um, for the Xcode version, for instance, Swift will not be, su uh, will not be supported on an earlier version. Um, so if you're developing an application with Swift, you might want one of the latest Xcode versions. Uh, then you've got the uh, ability to, by a tick of, um, of a button, to uh, build um, your application on any push. So whenever somebody commits to the repository and push, the, the build will be uh, triggered. Uh, you can then build by the simulator only or just as a um, IPA if you're doing some um, iOS development. And then uh, you can actually, that's kind of cool here, that's a, I cannot see it, uh, but you can actually drop your provisioning profile and your certificate directly that you want to sign your app uh, with if you're doing some iOS development. And then you can just tick again a box to uh, mention whether or not you want to distribute your views to the uh, group that you will have um, set up in the application in this portal. 
Uh, and uh, then I want to cannot see it again, but basically um, the application is building. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you can see your build output, which uh, hopefully are going to go um, pretty well. So there is something really, really, really cool uh, with this uh, application, with this portal, is you no longer need to um, have a Mac in your office or anywhere else in order to build an IPA, uh, like a, a, a app package. Uh, reason why is just like Microsoft provide that, uh, provide that for you. So um, until now, for instance, uh, I'm, I'm using TeamCity, and I needed to have, uh, I've been trying the off Macing Cloud, or all these kind of offerings that allows you just to build your uh, packages. But Macing Cloud is very slow, that's just like a bit cumbersome to set up. You can get a local Mac box uh, on, um, on your office, for instance. But then again, you, you get like a, so in some other kind of issues, such as if you've got a VPN, connecting a Mac box to an Azure VPN is uh, not really possible, so that's just another pain in the ass. So uh, that is kind of cool. So if you don't have a Mac, you can still build uh, pretty much a Mac package and distribute it. So that is, uh, from, from my point of view, that is uh, like a, a deal breaker. You can still use, again, um, Jenkins or um, uh, Visual Studio Team Services, but I will not offer this, um, this, um, this feature. So that's a cool stuff. So uh, yes, that's uh, just about it. And then as a result, you'll have your IPA uh, built or your APK build if you're doing some Android development, and then you can distribute it with the next step. So um, that is like the test um, functionality. So the build, again, functionality uh, literally didn't really exist uh, anywhere in any of the offerings. That was just like a, a VSTS, maybe, but VSTS, as we said, uh, didn't offer the ability to run IPA packages. That's what I really like, there is no configuration. Just pick your repository and say, okay, I want it just to be pushed to my friends. I want to use this uh, build engine, and that's it. So you don't need to figure out where's my project, where's this one, that, that's done. So um, test is literally uh, what a test, cloud, a test cloud is, and um, yeah, so that allows you to do some UI testing um, straight from the portal. So um, I don't know if you're familiar with test cloud. Again, it's just like these big racks of devices I mentioned a bit earlier. So um, I'm just like on this example, we're just using like um, iPhones or Apple or iOS. Development. So uh, you will be um, presented with a list of um, phones to use, or uh, void, uh, sorry, phones, iPads, uh, iPod Touch, if they still exist. Uh, you probably just have like a few hundreds to uh, big with, so you can actually filter them by uh, kind of memory size or like uh, screen size or, or whatever, uh, operating system, so you just can pick as much as you want. Uh, and then you just uh, f um, pick the framework that you want to use. So you can use Xamarin UI test, but if you want to use the open source Calabash, you can do so. Or Appium, which is pretty popular, you can do that as well. I mean, just again, this uh, platform is not um, only uh, directed at Xamarin developers. That's available to iOS developer, to Android developer, to uh, Accelerator, Cordoba, whatever. It's literally for everyone. Uh, and uh, once uh, you just selected your, um, your your settings, well, you just need to um, send your package with your test files to uh, to the test cloud engine. So you just have literally a uh, command line just to uh, to, to execute. Um, you traditionally will put this step on your build um, your build um, server, and uh, that would just like automatically inject it into the. Um, um, sorry, test cloud um, engine. So uh, once your tests are run, you'll be able to see. Uh, that will just uh, literally give you the, your test result for every single device with, for instance, here some metrics about the memory used in general. Um, you will get also, that is, you cannot see it, but that's the steps uh, that uh, of your test. For instance, this one is launch app. That is <laughs> sign in and sign up. So uh, when you just uh, create some some tests, usually you are going to categorize it and uh, into different sections of um, the areas you want to test. Uh, something that is quite important, for instance, and one very big reason to use something like that is to make sure that your app actually simply launches. So at least have one test, uh, UI test, whatever you do, which is make sure that the app launch. Then after you can do some fancy stuff such as signing in and just verifying that your flow is correct. But if you ju just like simply even pushing your build to your colleagues or whatever, 
and the app doesn't start, so that's going to be a big boo-boo. So uh, that allows you to make sure that it will never happen, at the very least. Um, and that's um, so uh, it also takes a screenshot at every step to um, allow you to uh, make sure that what you see is what you get. Um, so uh, that is just an example of a couple of um, iPhones. Uh, depending on the form factor, uh, the UI will render differently depending, dip, um, depending on the operating system as well. It may not, not load, it might be just completely broken. So uh, instead of just spending uh, um, decades trying to test on multiple de devices, uh, you can just uh, send that to whoever is in charge of QA. They, they, they would be able to have a quick look. All right, yes, this one is broken. So let's, let's um, do something about it. Um, so that's pretty much about this cloud. Uh, then there is a distribution. So you've got your app uh, that has been built. The, the app has been tested. And now you need to distribute it. So um, with, um, the, um, with this, this portal, uh, you can set up some groups. So let's say traditionally in an organization, you will have, uh, let's say, like a dev group, maybe a QA group, and then maybe like some user testing group. And uh, then that will go to uh, to your um, to, to your uh, store like App Store and um, the um, Google Pay. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, and so forth. Amazon Store as well. By the way, uh, there is uh, actually it's another completely another topic. But just uh, as an app developer, just figuring out which app um, store you're triggering is kind of interesting, depending on what your the return that you are expecting. Uh, for instance, a Windows Store is still pretty good because there are so little apps that uh, the, uh, user, uh, the users are willing to pay more, for instance. But yeah. Uh, so you can set up your groups, uh, and then simply once your uh, build has been built, so your app has been built by the build process, there we go, you can uh, tell it to automatically go and just propagate to the group of your choice, which is kind of nice. So uh, for instance, well, I've got that on my phone. Uh, all right, so yeah, here we go. So once uh, that has been pushed, well, that's literally what I got a little bit earlier when I was setting uh, this build. I'm just getting an email because I'm part of the group that I triggered. And uh, from this uh, email, I can just uh, just like test cloud, uh, not test cloud, um, just uh, like OK app at present or um, test flight. Uh, you'll be able to install your app directly from the uh, user interface and uh, yeah, and test it. So that's uh, literally very straightforward. So you can trigger your, your group again at the click of a button. At present, I, I must admit this is something that I've got automated on my Google server. Uh, but uh, still, I'm just looking at two or, different, two or three different portals in order to do that. I need to have my Google server in one side. I need to have my test agent. I've got the deployment server and then I've got the you know, it's just like the, that's getting pretty complicated. Uh, it's kind of nice to have it really in one place. Um, what have we got then? Uh, we've got tables. So that's the magic um, Azure tables that allows you, if you have a lightweight apps, to literally uh, provide some persistency uh, without too much complication, really. Uh, if you want something a bit more meaty, maybe you want to have like a you know, SQL storage or SQL server if you are going to be heavy on reporting, let's say. Uh, but if you've got like something quite simple, like a, a to-do list or uh, uh, an application that is going to, still, still don't get me wrong, you still will be able to do some interesting stuff such as make sure that only this user can access the data that he created, but you won't be able to do something that is extremely complicated. Uh, but uh, that gets us to quite a lot of uh, cases. <coughs> so um, little, what you need to do first is just connect with uh, one of your existing Azure subscription. So uh, you're getting, uh, so to create a table, you just simply click on this button or you use just your like a server to do some configuration. But that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and create the schema. Uh, here we don't see anything. Let me try to do that at the same time. But I just uh, created a table uh, called uh, to do, and I did create a description name and to do status. That took me 10 seconds to do, and uh, then my application automatically populated the data, um, and that's all. I didn't do need to write a single line of code to create a schema. It's nice. Uh, then we've got identity, uh, that's also uh, provided currently by Azure uh, mobile app services. 
Uh, that allows you again to, con uh, to uh, connect with Facebook, Google, Twitter, Microsoft, account, Azure, uh, Active Directory to authenticate with your app. So the only thing you need to do, uh, let's have a look. Well, uh, as per usual, it's just traditionally you need to create like an app ID and with a secret. Uh, it's literally the same for all of those um, offerings. And then just get into this, um, this portal, click on the Facebook for instance, enter your app ID and your secret and your, your setup you'll get an URL, which is literally the of URL that you need to call, that is stuff in your app, done. Uh, then we've got the crashes. So um, that's uh, as long as you uh, added the NuGet package to your application, if it's Xamarin form or whatever else, if it is not Xamarin form application, I present, I think it's only available really to Xamarin and Xamarin forms. Um, anytime a crash happens, they will just like inject um, the, um, any information about this crash to, uh, to the server. You've got the ability to upload in advance or later on the simple files in order just to, create, uh, to, to get some a bit more uh, detailed uh, crash uh, log. Um, that yep, looks a bit like this. Again, the contrast being uh, what it is, we don't really see what it is, but that is literally a nice .NET uh, stack trace. Um, uh, and then you also get uh, analytics, which is again, for instance, daily session per user, session duration, top devices, uh, active devices per version, countries, languages, that will just provide you some uh, at present basic analytics. Uh, obviously, as in Insight is, um, in, uh, is injecting into this platform, you'll be able also to add some uh, um, gen so some uh, event that you generate yourself. So if you want to figure out how many times, uh, if it's important for you to know how many times somebody clicks on this very button, you can just add an event and send it to this platform. It's not supported yet, I believe, here, but that's just a matter of time until it is. Um, so um, something to know, it's this, this portal has been built in an API-first fashion. That means that uh, before even creating the UI uh, that you just saw, um, unfortunately, with a very high um, <laughs> contrast and, uh, and luminosity, uh, they need to have their API ready. That means that you can do anything that you see is, uh, can be achieved uh, by uh, calling a REST API. And uh, you sh uh, actually, there is more thing that you can do with the API because the UI lags behind. Um, so, and it's publicly available, so you can just uh, literally use that into any kind of script, any kind of build process, and do absolutely anything. Push some build, uh, just like uh, deploy it somewhere, or just like uh, get some crash data and put it somewhere else. Um, so yes, that's uh, literally that's uh, a, a Swagger API interface. So at present, you can build distribute crash and it there's some data, uh, and you can just like literally uh, call that easily. Uh, that's documentation roadmap and pricing. So I'm just going to go quickly through uh, through what we uh, already saw. So that's the uh, the dashboard. Well, here I've just created two applications, one for um, um, a demo for iOS and one for Android. You can create a new application by simply clicking, clicking on this bit, as we saw a bit before. Let's explore this one. So um, that is the overview that just tells you if you want to use Crash and Analytics just with this bit. So uh, that's a view definition. So I can just simply out of the view create a new definition. I'm going to delete this one. Why not? Let's be crazy. Uh, up, 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 edit, remove view configuration. Yeah, let's do it on the fly. So um, I'm going to set up a branch. So up, 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 up. Oh, no, I want to do something even better. I want you to delete everything. Uh, can I delete everything? Can probably. No. So yes, yeah, so that's my Git repository. Sorry. So uh, search for branches. I can search for anything. It doesn't matter. Here I've got a branch that I want to set up, which is uh, linked to my GitHub Xamarin's Prism repository. Here, as you can see, they will just provide you any project available uh, on this repository that is just a .NET project or a Xcode project or a uh, Cordoba project. Uh, you just need to select what you want. Then, what configuration you want? Ad hoc, App Store, debug release. Uh, let's get like a uh, debug. Why not? Uh, what Xcode version you want here? 
Okay, this one you don't push sure. I'm going to build for a simulator only because it's going to be a bit faster, but otherwise you can, as I mentioned, you can just uh, put your provisioning flow file here and your, um, and your um, certificate here, but let's not do that. And I'm going to build for simulator, finish the setup, boom. And it's just like literally the simplest way to set up a build. Uh, anybody in this room have been just take care of just setting up build servers and maintaining it through versions and iterations and crazy iOS stuff? No, no one? Well, that's very good. Use that instead. <laughs> that will save you a lot of work. So uh, now we can see that this is building, we can see the output, nice um, and easy, but literally, by doing nothing, it just takes you like a couple of seconds to set up a build, which is pretty cool. So anyway, that's going to run, that's going to be successful, that's going to be awesome, and then I can download like uh, the uh, package and just do uh, something cool with it, such as pushing it wherever I need. So that was the test bit. Uh, test bit, yes, uh, for test bits, that's going to be like uh, taking a bit too much time to do it, but um, I, I can just go up to uh, the uh, before uploading a build. So um, which device do you want to test? So devices, so this is what I'm saying, we've got like a lot of Apple, uh, Apple phones. Uh, which was version I want? I want to test on uh, 704 and uh, this one, BIM. That sounds good. Then uh, what, so any from Apple's phones uh, here, uh, whatever that is, memory, uh, four and three gig, and two gigs, yeah. Up. And uh, then up here we go on this one, that one, that one. Oh, well, not this one, if I got four devices. I want to use uh, UI, test, um, UI test, bah. And then that is ready to go. Just need to copy this, um, these commands and put that in your full server and you're ready to go. And then you'll be able to have uh, the results coming in this interface. Then distribution. There we go. So for instance, uh, I, I have a new release here. Um, well, I don't need to do that here. Oh, okay, well, good, I suppose. Let's say that I've got an IPA file um, that is uh, hanging around on my computer, such as here, uh, such as somewhere. Uh, MPBS, build, uh, present demo, file, bin, iPhone, release, uh, bath, and I'm looking for a, where are you? Where are you? Something with a lot of, okay, size, size is going to be nice. Here we go, that's likely to be this thing. Stuck. Uh, ultimately, you end up uh, with an email like that in your mailbox if you're on the distribution list. Then just simply click on install, which is going to uh, bring up the install.mobile.azure.com uh, website. <coughs> it's very white, here we go. And then just click on this thing, and that is going to install your app, just uh, as you expect from uh, OK app. Install, there you go. So that's uh, pretty simple. <coughs> to click off a button, and you can also download it directly from the website. It's going to store your IPAs until further notice. So that was the table that we went through as well. So I already connected my application to my Azure subscription. So if you want to create another table, you quickly call it uh, foobar, why not? Sub-delete, which is kind of a nice option because for well, data is cheap, you might as well not delete your records, can be useful. Uh, dynamic schema, if you want to be able to modify it uh, on, on the fly. Um, from your application, per user data that is just filtering again on the uh, records created by your users. Again, that's not that many options, but that's what quite a lot of applications will fall into. Bah, you got your table. Coming up, come on, foobar. There you go. Foobar, and uh, let's edit the schema. What's got uh, foobar is going to have some foo. Of course, because the foobar string foo. 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 No. Ooh. Baff. And you are creating my database. You can do that also from your app, from your server, just dynamically, but uh, here you go. Now I've got a nice table with a foo. And then again, it's only one line of code uh, in order to connect your mobile application to that thing. So, uh, and then just like a support, it's going to say just like add that, remove that, update this, uh, four line of code, and you've got literally an application and database back and working. So that's um, 
cape that's connected already my application with Facebook simply by going to the uh, Facebook app. I could do that with Twitter as well. I just need to go to my Twitter account, copy the API key, uh, API key and the API secret, and then your app is connected to Facebook, Twitter, anything else. Then you've got your crashes, so I probably can generate some new crashes with my app. Where's my app? I just made something that crashed on purpose, so we can have some data. So that's nice. I left building some application that crashes. So if I go like this, probably like that, and that, and that should crash. There we go. Nice. There we go. So we should have uh, like some new data coming in. Like one minute ago. Come on. Don't let me down. Yeah, just now. It's a nice crash. There you, go. And you can see that there is a bit of stack trace. It tells you what happens. If I do it 20 times, you still have the same thing. And uh, analytics. There we go. So like uh, that's uh, active user daily. Well, that, I just literally created that before coming here, like, uh, as I do. And uh, app Singapore and none. None is because I use a simulator and I didn't set up the uh, Vikings location. So there we go. I think that's about it, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm literally quite excited about this thing because uh, well, for what we do, it is like a time saver, especially <laughs> the fact of uh, the build is, it, it, again, if you've been uh, working on building some <coughs> um, IPA um, apps, especially for iOS, Android is a little bit easier. But that is just like a nice to, uh, very nice to have. Again, the, the beauty of it is just it is REST driven, so you can literally get the bits that you want and put it absolutely wherever you want. Be it on a um, PowerShell script, like a batch script, any good server, that will just work. Um, so that is nice and cool. Ah, yes, no, yes, yeah, so the cool stuff I wanted to show was the uh, uh, doc, uh, yes, that thing, the API. To put a point that's everything. Oh, no, it's not that. Uh, doc. Uh, aha, here we go. So that's the API that is powering uh, the uh, application. So literally everything that is done uh, on this application is gets its data from that thing. So you can actually log in. Uh, so if you put your application username and password, which I'm going to do, accelerators.com, uh, my password is I don't know what. By the way, if you are still using some password, like manual password that you keep in your head, stop doing that and use something like that. Those guys haven't been uh, cracked yet. I think that there are um, one password. So that's one of the only ones that uh, didn't get anything stolen yet. So I'm saying yet yeah, because I'm probably going to. Uh, that, that's just uh, 2017, that's a year where you really need to have like 20 million passwords that are low like this. In so that should authorize me with the API, and then I can just like, you can use obviously uh, open authentication from any application to be able to do that with that. If you want to create a new user interface for that thing, feel free to do it, you can. So let's have a look, authorize, yeah, I'm authenticated, excellent. And then uh, what can I do? I can just, uh, let's see what I can do, crash data, can I get something there? I haven't tried that yet, maybe. So, uh, well, no, that's complete. I want something with, without parameters because I'm not sure what to use. Um, account, user, get user, excellent. Okay, I can. Oh, no, we need to provide some stuff, right? Uh, get you, try out. I don't care, try out. That's what happens. Yeah, whatever. But that <coughs> would work. <laughs> that's all. Well, that's, that's all I think for it. Um, it's in preview, so just to take with a little grain of salt, but um, I am starting to use it because uh, that's convenient. There we go. Any questions?